Hi, hey, I'm Bob Mountain. I'm here with uh, I'm here with the Common Good Awareness Project. Uh, I kind of don't do anything in particular, but I do everything. You know, I can even be a marker if I have to be. Mm -hmm. And they uh, create events, apply for grants and different things like that. And uh, I had a kind of slideshow, but I was coming in the train and through speaking to some people in the hall. Uh, kind of abandoned that. But, and uh, what I'd like to say is, it's quite good if I'm running a project just now, we film pro I'm a sort of community activist, so that's what they call me anyway. And uh, my whole idea for what I do is creating uh, movements, creating a movement for change to help, to make a better sort of environment, community that we've got just now, you know, a decent life for people, which I'm sure everybody can get into. And I'm old enough to remember the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, when there was a really good movement happening where a lot of these things about the environment and the women's movement came out of that. And I've also watched the, the neoliberal steamroller for the last 40 years just crushing a lot of these things. And up to now it's becoming very dangerous. So <clears throat> there's lots of really brilliant things going on in the community. And there's lots of interesting things with maps and open knowledge and different things like that. Which is great. But I think we need more than that. I think we need some context about what we're doing. You know, what is the vision, what, what are we trying to, you know, what we're trying to achieve in the long run. And it's like, uh, you know, I suppose it, what I do anyway is, it's a bit like the map. I love the open street map because, because it's technology but to get out the street and speak to people. It's a good way of picking up ideas and stuff. And so you've got the map and you get different layers of the map. You know, you have a cycling thing, you have a thing with the birds, you have all these different ideas about maps. And that's what kind of what I try to do in the community. You know, it's, it's how you find these different layers of community. How you create critical connections between all the things that's going on in order to build some kind of idea, some kind of vision of where we're going, you know, to make, to make the world a better place. And uh, the common good is uh, part of that thing. And uh, so the, the common good, to get an idea of what the common good is, in fact, we'll be here the whole day and we've got books and all sorts of information there uh, from this end out. But basically, the common good is unique in Scotland and it consists of a whole pile of assets like buildings, uh, art galleries, museums, nurseries, town halls, parks, and what are called movable assets, uh, things like paintings and jewellery. Furniture, like Glasgow Art Galleries, the contents of the Glasgow Art Gallery is part of the common good, which means it's publicly owned. The public own the common good. Common good's 500 years old, and it's got laws to protect it. And it's the various councils around the country who are the caretakers of our common good. They're, they're there to look after the common good. So that in my generations had great fun with the common good for years, but for the next generations in perpetuity, kids can enjoy it. Uh, and what's happened with the common good is a total lack of awareness that it actually exists. And uh, when I get back into it again, it was about six years ago, Glasgow City Council decided to uh, privatise basically the commons of the city. That's all the common good assets, and it included a lot of jobs in the art galleries and different things like that. And uh, Stephen Purcell, who was the, the leader guy in the council then, somebody mentioned to him that, you know, we really need to tell the public about this because this is, these are public assets. And he says, over my dead body. And the thing went ahead. And it was, I think it's called Glasgow Life now. It used to be called Culture and Sport. Uh, so that's when I started really, you know, reawakening the idea about, about the, the, the Common Good Fund. And, uh, Andy Whiteman, there's different people who know quite, you know, there's a lot of academic work done there, there's a lot of people who know about uh, the law and different things like that, but it's down to awareness, it's about how ordinary people discover what the common good is. And it's such a beautiful network. You know, it's all over Scotland, the smallest villages and the inner cities, and I reckon this fund and these assets should be used as a, as a kind of social network, you know, a civic network, where we can talk about the things that's happening in the different places with drugs and things for young people to do and stuff like that. And uh, <coughs> so it's uh, so the idea of what I do is try and create awareness of the common good. But it also has to be kind of real to people. 
And uh, we, we now have a project in Glasgow, uh, the Farmhouse Trust, and it was a park in Govan that the council wanted to privatise the park, the park and create a community hub or whatever it was for two and a half million quid or whatever. So we managed to stop doing that because part of the idea was disconnecting it to be the good, i.e. take it away from the common good. So we now have a project there. Uh, we've got an old building that's lying rotten for 30 years and uh, we're using the community to plan it and uh, train people to do the capture work. We're basically going to build, build the, uh, the building under the principles of the common good. And through the process, that education process building it, we'll then discover what we want to use the building for as a, as a kind of independent you know, a resource or education centre. That's the, that's the kind of work I'm doing just now. And that was, I didn't think I'd get that much out. <laughs> but as I say, I've got, a, you know, I've got information installed there and I'm sure I've forgot to tell you quite a lot, lot of stuff. But uh, to me, it's, it's basically, if we, if we don't replace the commons, if we don't you know, reconnect to the commons, I'm hiding to nothing, because basically we don't have a lot more left, you know. And, it, and it's a really good organising tool, because people, people can, uh, people relate to it. <laughs> and the commons, I mean, it was 500 years old. And it was a collective this idea of small farmers and small families, you know, for security to get together. And uh, it's accrued all these, uh, these assets, you know, over 500 years. And uh, of course, the church and the crown and agriculture, but the stuff that's going on just now really is these people are underachievers. So the amount of the commons is disappearing under their nose. Uh, these are buildings sitting about in Govan doing nothing. I don't know whether they're common good, but people ask me about Bob, you know, that belongs to the council, it's not to do the common good, and I say, well, who belongs to the council? As far as I'm concerned, it's all common good. And it's historic, historical, this, the pictures and the art galleries, these are all public known assets. And the important part of it is uh, the social and local history, because a lot of people have, have uh, dedicated these things to the commons. In the art galleries, and it's the first thing to go when the tourism comes in, is they can't get it on a, you know, a, a muck and things like that. Uh, these are the first things to go. And this is the guy who uh, privatised the commons in Glasgow, the culture and sport. This is the, the sort of school campaign. In the 1975s, kind of significant because that's when the old boroughs in Scotland were disbanded and they uh, created the new councils. And all common good should have been taken from the old boroughs and put into the new council, lock, stock and barrel. But that's where a lot of stuff disappeared. But fortunately there's a lot of people who still work for the council in these days. So there's still a lot of knowledge about where buildings were and where land was in different uh, possessions. Uh, you know, so this idea of how we can engage with older people to educate younger people about the commons and uh, where it was. Uh, this is the Park Park, where the council has been busy trying to build uh, go eight slides, you know, adventure playground grounds in the middle of the woods. And uh, there was a massive protest stopping doing it. Now that park is on the, on the Common Good Register because the only thing is the council refused to put things on the Common Good Register. So it took a, a massive campaign to put that on the register. But there's also a thing in the botanics in Glasgow, same thing, a big campaign, but it's now on the register. And the city council were told by the government eh, to produce a common good, you know, a list of the common good, and they said it would cost four million quid for some reason. And eh, that's for place in, eh, in government. It's all buildings lay there for eh, 25 years, and that's going to be for a common good eh, project where we can educate people about the common good and use it as a template that other people can use in different ways. And that's just basically tools for organising. You don't have to convince people the common good is a good idea. Live classes like it, work classes like it, fits party lines. You know, it's dead easy to get people engaged with the common good, but you probably have to do a bit more and start researching it. Right. I'll tell you if you're going to do a question.